So, you're in the market to buy a brand new MacBook Air. Maybe you grew wrinkles while waiting for Apple to completely dump the butterfly keys and replace them with the vastly superior scissor style keys. Or maybe this is your first ever MacBook purchase and you just don't know which one is the right one for you. Well, boy do I have the right video for you. Today, we're going to be comparing three different MacBook Air models, the 2019 MacBook Air, the new 2020 base MacBook Air with the new keys, and the new 2020 MacBook Air with the optional $100 upgrade to that quad-core processor, and we're going to put them through a variety of tests to see which one performs the best. Obviously, we would all expect the quad-core to outperform these other chumps, right? But by how big of a margin? Is it like night and day? Should you spend those extra $100 for that quad core processor upgrade or spend it on maybe storage or something else well sit tight grab some snacks grab some drinks and get ready as we dive into all of these tests let's do this okay so first things first specs as this is the number one most important factor when performing these stress tests these are the technical specifications of each MacBook Air on screen right now. In particular, when I'm buying Macs for my own personal use, I tend to prioritize my processor and RAM, simply because I do a lot of heavy video editing, photo editing, and in general, I'm doing multiple things all at once. So for me, specs are a big deal, as they should be for all of you when you drop this much cash on a computer set to last you several years. What's important to note is that this quad-core processor MacBook Air will be more future-proof than the rest. The reason is, as time progresses, applications and technology are advancing at a very rapid pace, so it's way better to have more cores in the long run, so that way your machine can sustain peak speeds for years to come no matter what's thrown at it. But anyway, now that we have that out of the way, let's get to some raw benchmarks. So here, they are, from left to right, the 2019 MacBook Air in rose gold. In the middle is space gray for the dual core 2020 base model. And to the far right in silver, we have the 2020 quad core MacBook Air. We begin with the obligatory Geekbench 5 test, which will give us some concrete numbers and give us a pretty good idea at how well these MacBooks are able to handle single core applications and multi-threaded multi-core applications. Geekbench is arguably the holy grail of benchmarking and is the test most people go to when trying to tap into what a computer is capable of. I'll always go from left to right for this video unless I stay otherwise. So for single core, our 2018 MacBook Air with the 8th generation dual core i5 scored 716. The base 2020 MacBook Air with the 10th gen dual core i3 scored 891. And then the higher spec 10th gen quad core i5 came in at 1122. Just with these results, the $100 upgrade is already looking very promising. Now, for multi-core again, from left to right, last year's model scored 1593, the base 2020 scored 2067, and the 2020 quad-core scored a much higher 3310. What do you think? $100 worth it? Absolutely. Okay, video's over. See you guys next time. Nah, I'm kidding. Next up is another popular test, and this one really cranks up the fans. Sounds like an airplane was taken off. Man, I wish I could take off on a plane right now, but instead, we're all on lockdown. Darn it, man. This is the Cinebench R20 test and really taps into just about every ounce of power within the system. The fans crank up, processors turbo boost, but eventually stabilize, and these computers get hot. So hot, I'd literally say you could probably get some kind of mild first degree burns if having this on your lap for a really long time. I had the Intel Power Gadget tool running just to make sure and yup, every single machine maxing out on temperature and saw little variation between temperatures. All cranked up and all extremely hot. But anyway, the 2019 did lag significantly behind and finish this test way later than the other two. But after some time, we get a score of 566 for the 2019 Air, 676 for the base 2020, and 973 for the quad core. Do you see where I'm getting at? Look at that insane bump to improvement for just a hundred bucks more. That's approximately a 43% increase over the base model for 2020 based off this in a bench test alone. We won't stop here though. We need more concrete evidence to show us just how superior the quad core design is over the dual core base model and why I recommend 
all to upgrade to the quad core if you upgrade anything at all. For my gamers who plan to game on their MacBook Air, one, terrible idea, and two, and two, Macs in general are notorious for not being the best way to game. Some of the beefier, more expensive Macs, like the new Cheese Grater 2019 Mac Pro, are somewhat changing that rhetoric, but definitely not these. Even the quad core barely has passable benchmarks. For this test, called the Heaven Benchmark Test, the system primarily pushes the graphics, whether integrated or discrete, and gives it a raw score at the end, while also providing frame rate information. In terms of raw score, the 2019 Air got a 322, that's miserable. 468 for the base 2020 and 545 for the quad core. Again, these scores are pretty awful as compared to Mac desktops and are leagues behind some of the other PCs and other window laptops on the market. For frames per second, the 2019 scored an abysmal 12.8 frames per second. Like what can you play on this MacBook seriously, Tetris? The base 2020 scored an improved yet still awful 18.6 average frame per second, while the quad core MacBook Air scored 21.6 and even then, 21.6 frames per second is just unplayable for most diehard gamers. The Intel Iris Plus graphics found on the majority of the newer Airs isn't anything too impressive, but as is evident, that quad core came in clutch and did provide with slightly better results. Now, while on the topic of graphics, there's this other test I really like called the Metal Test. It's a really good one as it tests a multitude of different aspects to a computer's graphics capabilities. Within this test, you have basic flashing 2D scenes and others being full 3D animations. For this one, I performed the 1440p Manhattan Test as well as the Aztec Ruin Test, both being pretty graphically demanding and then the computer spits out an average frame per second to see how well it performed. We'll start with the Manhattan Manhattan test and the 2019 MacBook Air scored yet again a terrible score, coming in at 17.29 frames per second. Are we still surprised at this point though? The base 2020 averaged 29.544, almost doubling the performance of the previous gen, and the quad core MacBook Air for 2020 scored 34.027 frames per second, which to me is passable, I guess. Then, we ran the Aztec Ruin test, being the more graphically intensive of the two, and can see the 2019 Air averaged 9.08 frames per second. Yikes. No comment there. The 2020 base at 11.67 frames per second, again pretty terrible, and the quad core also with a pretty low score but still more than double than the base 2019 Air at 19.12 frames per second. So yeah, if it isn't obvious yet, don't get an Air if you're going to do anything graphically intensive on it or gaming at all. You can always buy an eGPU to boost its performance, but why? Just invest your money in a MacBook Pro in that case or a PC if you're purely looking to game. Alright, we now move to disk speed performance, namely our solid state drives, also known as SSDs. MacBooks luckily across the board all have pretty speedy SSDs, and it's no different with all of these MacBook Airs. While not blazing fast, and certainly not as fast as the SSDs found in the likes of the MacBook Pros, we still see pretty good speeds. Luckily, we did get our storage increase twofold on the new models, so the 2019 I have here is a base 128GB, while the 2020 base and quad core both sport a 256GB SSD. On read speeds, the 2019 Air was averaging above 1800 almost 1900 and the 2020 models were just about neck and neck, hovering around 12 and 1300 while on the right speeds, the 2019 Air sits at roughly 900 megs a second, while the 2020 base was scoring 1000 and the quad core about 1300. There is some variation here and there, but they'll all overall give you about the same speedy performance from the SSDs. And now this is the test that ultimately delayed this video. This video was supposed to come out yesterday, but I was shocked at just how long this test actually took. My god. Luckily, off camera, I was able to enjoy regular show. Can you guys believe I just started getting into that show? It's hilarious, and I personally dig the episodes having to do with Muscle Man the most. Uh, but anyway, this is the Blender test, and I opted for the quick version of the test. How ironic. Blender conglomerates much of what the metal test does, cranks the CPU to its limit, and then the GPU, and at the very end, gives you the time and how long it took to complete the test. Here, shorter is better, meaning it finished the test faster. If if I recall correctly, in my 16 inch MacBook Pro comparison, those models finished in roughly about 20 minutes. These however, uh, doesn't look too hot man. The first to finish was the quad core air at 1 hour and 9 minutes. 
Following that, much, much later, the base 2020 MacBook Air finished in 1 hour and 45 minutes, and trailing just behind it was the 2019 Air at 1 hour and 47 minutes, just 2 minutes later. I really wasn't expecting them to take this long, but in the name of testing, it was worth it and is evident that the quad core is just the way to go. I sound like a broken record, I know, I hope you get the gist by now, but finally, we arrive to my final test. In case any of you guys are wanting to do some light video editing, this one's for you. Normally for an Air, I would say pick it up if you anticipate to do very light video editing, nothing too crazy. If you pick up an Air and film at 4K, that may cause trouble too as the rendering times may be longer than expected but for short projects, this should do just fine. In this test, we took the same 3 minute video on all 3 computers and exported them using the same exact compressor settings on each one. Usually when I'm exporting, I normally take advantage and create my thumbnails while the video exports and on the Mac Pro, man exporting times are blazing fast. Here, the 2020 Quad Core Air finished this lightly edited video first, once again finishing at 6 minutes and 33 seconds, followed behind the 2020 base model at 8 minutes and 41 seconds, and dead last, lagging way behind, feel like it took a quick snooze to be honest, the 2019 Air finished at 21 minutes and 20 seconds, a huge slouch for sure. So pick your configurations very carefully ladies and gentlemen, especially for those that require this for a job or to make money, where time literally is money. So what's our takeaway here? Obviously, as is pretty evident, in my opinion, the $100 upgrade is well worth the money as we can see pretty clear improvements. It's not even like that trash 5% or 8% improvements we sometimes see generation over generation. Nah, this is a clear improvement over the base model by a large margin. So if you or anyone you know is wanting to pick up a MacBook Air, send them this video so they can see for themselves. The quad-core processor is a huge step up, and as I mentioned earlier, will also future-proof your computer better for years to come. The quad-core processor will be able to handle tasks way better than the measly dual-core, and honestly, for a thousand dollars, I'm surprised Apple is still selling a computer with a dual-core processor in 2020. So please guys, get the hundred dollar upgrade, you'll thank me later. If you're still having a tough time deciding on model or configuration, don't worry. You can DM me on my social medias and ask me your specific needs and I'll be able to make a recommendation for you in my DMs. I'm also planning on making a follow up comparing this entry air to the entry 13 inch pro to see which one is a better value now that the price was dropped to $9.99 and how they perform against one another. So I hope that video along with this one helps you guys out a lot. Anyways guys, that's it for me, I hope I can catch all of you in my next video. Peace.